He was so deep in thought, he didn't even notice the Roman soldier walking up behind him. When he finally looked up, it was too late. His last words were simple. Do not disturb my circles. That man was Archimedes, the greatest mathematician of the ancient world. And yes, he literally died thinking about geometry. Archimedes lived over 2,000 years ago, yet his lessons still shape us today. Watch to find out how. Archimedes was born around 287 BCE in Syracuse, a Greek city on the island of Sicily. His father was an astronomer, so he grew up surrounded by questions. Why do things move? Why do they float? Why do they fall? As a young man, he studied in Alexandria, the greatest center of learning in the world, where minds from every corner of the Mediterranean gathered to study mathematics, astronomy, and philosophy. When he returned to Syracuse, he became the city's genius in residence, an inventor, a physicist, a mathematician, and in many ways, the first true scientist. He discovered how levers work, why objects float, how to calculate the area of a circle, and even designed machines to defend his city from a Roman invasion. But at the core of everything he did was one belief. Mathematics reveals its secrets only to those who approach it with pure love for its own beauty. It's 4.30 in the morning and still dark over Syracuse. The city sleeps, but inside a small house near the harbor, an oil lamp burns. Archimedes wakes early, not because he has to, but because he can't wait to think. He walks to his table, a smooth surface covered in fine sand. That's where he draws, not for art, but for discovery. Circles, triangles, spirals, erased and redrawn again and again. Each line brings him closer to truth. How many theorems in geometry, which have seemed at first impracticable, are in time successfully worked out? No breakfast, no distraction, just quiet thought and endless curiosity. As the sun rises, the streets fill with traders and dock workers. Archimedes walks down to the port, fascinated by how the world moves. He watches ships being loaded and unloaded, men pushing, ropes creaking, levers bending under weight. And right there, he sees the pattern, the balance, the principle. He demonstrated to King Hiero, with a lever and a fulcrum, I can move anything launching a ship with ease to prove his point. To him, that wasn't poetry, it was physics, the idea that even the heaviest burden can be moved if you understand the laws of nature. He experiments with pulleys, weights, and ropes, and when the city later faces attack, he'll use this same understanding to design weapons that hold off the Roman fleet for years. Around midday, he visits the public baths, the ancient version of a spa. But even here, his mind never stops. As he steps into the water, he notices something. The level rises. That's it. The connection hits him like lightning. The volume of water displaced equals the volume of the body submerged. He leaps up, shouting through the streets of Syracuse, Eureka, I have found it. That's not a myth. Ancient writers confirm it happened, and that one joyful moment gave us the foundation of modern fluid mechanics. Archimedes later reflects, the properties of figures are discovered by reasoning, not by chance, cementing his belief that truth emerges from disciplined thought. After a quick lunch, bread, olives, maybe a sip of wine, he's back at work. The afternoon light filters through the window, illuminating the sand where new ideas take shape. Archimedes studies the relationship between spheres and cylinders, his proudest discovery. He writes, the sphere's volume is two thirds that of the cylinder enclosing it. It's a truth so dear he wishes it carved on his tomb. He experiments endlessly, proving, measuring, verifying with water, weights, and mirrors, trying to understand the harmony between form and function. 
Archimedes records every proof meticulously. He works with the patience of a monk, the precision of an engineer, and the wonder of a child. Around 8 p.m., the city goes quiet again, but Archimedes' lamp still burns. He is sitting at his table, drawing circles in the sand one last time before sleep. Outside, soldiers and merchants talk about politics. Inside, Archimedes studies perfection. He sees geometry not as numbers, but as truth itself. Rise above oneself and grasp the world. For him, thinking isn't just work, it's worship. He believes that by understanding order, humans can touch something divine. Archimedes lived by principles that defined his genius. Focus. He could think for hours without food or sleep. Relentless curiosity. Every problem was an invitation to learn truth without proof. Intellectual humility. He tested everything, never accepting guessing. Devotion to beauty. For him, mathematics wasn't a tool, it was art. Archimedes believed the universe was built on order and that by studying it, humans could understand their place within it. His pursuit of knowledge wasn't about fame or invention, it was about touching eternity. When the Romans finally invaded Syracuse in 212, Archimedes was at home, doing what he always did, thinking. A soldier broke into his study, Archimedes didn't run, didn't beg. He just looked up and said, Do not disturb my circles. And those were his last words. He died surrounded by his work, lost in thought, devoted to truth until the very end. Archimedes shows us that true genius isn't about wealth, speed, or recognition. It's about devotion. He dedicated his entire life to understanding how the world works. And in doing so, he helped build the very foundation of modern science. His lesson is simple. If you give your full attention to something you love, with patience, discipline, and curiosity, you can move the world too. If you think Archimedes' story is worth exploring, comment insane below. See you in the next video.